Good day everyone! So I'm Sir Melchor Omiterio, your teacher for today. Class, are you ready to learn? Yes, sir. Very good. So, before we proceed to our topic or discussion for today, um, let us have a short prayer. Let's bow our head and feel the presence of God. Thank you, Lord, that you are a friend. You delight in all we do, especially when you hear our prayers. And we give thanks to you. Amen. Are you excited? So class, I have here some rules during our discussion. First, be on time. To be followed by, listen actively and attentively. Avoid talking while I'm discussing. And lastly, if you have a questions or concern, kindly raise your hand first before you speak. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Good. So, let's move on to our discussion for today. Teaching is much more likely to be successful when we guided by clear lesson plan. So class, when you hear the word lesson plan, what comes first into your mind? Any idea or anyone? Yes, Mr. Pablo? Great answer, Mr. Pablo. Thank you. So, when we say lesson plan, it's a description of the course of instructions or learning trajectory. And it is a guide for what students need to learn and how it be taught and how learning be measured. So, lesson plan helps the teacher be more effective in a classroom by providing a detailed outline to follow each class period. So now, we are already know what is lesson plan all about. So, now let's proceed to the six key elements of good lesson plan. First, we have objectives. Kindly read the definitions of objectives, Mr. Gaspar. So, thank you. The first important question you should um, ask, what will students learn in this lesson? Think about the specific knowledge, skills, awareness, and language you want students to learn. Make an objective reasonable and attainable. That is make sure that your objectives can be reached within the time you have for the lesson. In order to know if the lesson objectives are reached, the objectives need to describe that something measurable. Because of this, the lesson plan objective should describe the behavior that can be observed. Good lesson plan objective describes students should be able to do after the lesson, not what they don't know. For example, the objectives of the current lesson is the reader to know the six key elements of a good lesson plan. To work this in a way that can be observed and measured, we can say that after this lesson, participants will be able to describe the six key elements. That will be the objectives. The next important key elements we have, sequencing. It describes what will happen during the lesson, in order which it happens and how you will transition between activities and to the next lesson. Consideration for sequencing could include when is the best time to do a certain activity? And what is a logical but meaningful way to, uh, to organize the lesson? The sequencing of a lesson should support the lesson objectives. Many lessons follow this structure. First, we have warm-up, introduction to the class topic, presentation of materials, one or more activities for students to practice, evaluations of the practice, and lastly, application to the relevant activities. We want learners to be able to apply the new knowledge and skills to authentic new world situation. One of the best way to achieve this is by slowly removing the teacher as a director. Activities early in a lesson should include more direct guidance from the teacher. As the lesson progressive learners should be given more independent. So, from the direct guidance from the teacher, and learners have more independent. And at the same time, we are moving students from more surface level of memorization and identification. 
thus to higher level of interaction with lesson materials such as applying, analyzing, and synthesizing. That will be the sequencing. The third key elements we have, timing. Well, it's important to be flexible in teaching. It is also important to estimate how long each part of the lesson it takes. This will help organize activity and determine what is possible to do in a lesson. Never forget that the learning takes time. Make sure to give students plenty of time to process the activity or engage in new learning. For differentiation, you will have a variety of students in your classroom. How will you support students who need extra help and students who need challenge more? When you are writing a lesson plan, make sure to include your details about students' interaction. For example, when they doing fair work, individual work, group work, or we listening to the teachers presenting information. Make sure that your lesson include the balance of interaction during the class as this can help with differentiation. And create learning environment that is protective for multiple learning styles, providing detailed notes in a lesson plans regarding what challenges students might have and how you may avoid or lessens the impact of these challenges can help a teachers adapt for differentiation. Fifty important elements of a good lesson plan we have assessment. Assessment of student learning. How will you know what students have learned and how will you know if the learning objectives will met? Will you ask your students comprehension questions or there will be a short presentations, drills, short quiz, written assignments or group activity where students must use new learning to complete the task? So for the assessment for overall lessons, do you leave time at the end of the lessons together with feedback? Or is there space to take notes on the lesson plan? After each class, try to find the time to reflect on the lessons and identify what worked and what did not. So for the last key elements of a good lesson plan, we have materials. In order to implement good lessons, you need to know what materials are necessary that includes books, pen and hand out, and so on. Make sure to obtain the necessary materials before class is important and at the same time teachers help to feel more prepared. Your next step is to take a comprehension quiz which will not only um, help you to review these concepts but also think why six elements should be included in a lesson plan. So those are the six important key elements for a good lesson plan. And the introduction. So, do you have any questions or violent reaction class? None, sir. Everything will be clear? Yes, sir. So, thank you, class. Um, have a nice day and keep safe, everyone. Hello! I am Teacher Judith. How are you today? Okay, very good. Today, I will go into this class about daily lesson log and daily lesson plan. So, let's start! Lesson log is a template used by teacher to log parts of their daily lesson or classes. It's covered a day or a week's time of lesson. Ibig sabihin, ang daily lesson log ay ginagamit ito for one week. One daily lesson log is pang one week na siya. This is the format of DLL. First is objective. The objective is state what the teacher intends to teach and serve as a guide for instruction and assessment. Kung sa semi lesson plan, ang objective nito is effective, cognitive, and psychomotor. So dito ang ang objective nito is content standard, performance standard, and learning competencies. The content standard refers to the learning area-based facts, concept, and procedure that students need to learn. While the competencies pertain to the knowledge, skill, 
and attitudes that students need to demonstrate in a lesson. The competency codes are also lagged in this part of the DLL. Question, saan natin pwede kunin ito? Kinukuha natin ito sa pinagkakatiwalaang sources, which is curriculum guide. Like for example, health na pili mo, which is grade 7. And your lesson for the day 1 is, are you really healthy, which is nakapaloob sa holistic health. Punta tayo sa curriculum guide, which is grade 7, holistic health. So, makikita natin dito yung content standard, performance standard, and learning co competencies dito sa curriculum guide. Yung learning competencies mo is dapat kung saan malapit sa lesson mo, which is ito yon. And yung code then is nakalagay din dito sa curriculum guide. Next is content. The topic or subject matter pertains to the particular content that the lesson focuses on. Next is learning resources. The reference included the particular pages of the teacher guide, learning materials, textbook, and the other additional materials from the LRMDS portal. The other learning resources refers to materials such as those that a teacher made, authentic, and others not included in the reference. This part of the DLL can also include the supplies, equipment, tools, and other non-print materials needed for activities before, during, and after the lesson. Next is procedures. This part of the DLL contains 10 parts including First is reviewing Previous lesson or presenting the new lesson. This is the review or presenting the new lesson. So like for example. And next is establishing a purpose for the lesson will motivate the learner to learn the new lesson. You can tell what they learn here. It is used for motivational. Next is presenting example or instances of the new shows, instances of the content and competencies. Dito, pwede ka na, pwede ka na mag-present ng mga activities that will introduce your new lesson. In discussion, will divided into two. Next, a first is discussion new concept leads to the first formative assessment. Dito, pwede mo na ituro yung new lesson mo to your students. Next is continuation of the discussion of new concepts leading to the second formative assessment that defends the lesson and shows learner new ways of applying learning. In this discussion, dito mo Makikita yung expansion and elaboration ng new lesson mo. And next is developing mastery, which lead to the third formative assessment. Can be done through more individual work activities such as writing, creative, creative ways of representing learning, dramatizing, etc. It means this is the activities that you will allow learner to transfer the new lesson into new situation. Next is finding practical application of concepts and skill in daily living, which can develop appreciation and valuing for student learning by bridging the lesson to daily living. In the additional lesson plan, this is the independence or group activity, part national application. Dito sa part na ito, is maglalagay ka ng mga activities na matututunan nila pero ma-apply ma nila through day-to-day -day basis sa pamumuhay nila. Next is making generalization and abstraction about the lesson will conclude the lesson by asking learner good question that will help them crystallize their learning so they can declare knowledge and demonstrate their skill. So, ito na yung generalization. Next is evaluating learning is a way of assessing the learner's 
and whether the learning objectives have been met. Next is additional activities for application or remediation will be based on the formative assessments and will provide children with enrichment or remedial activities in traditional lesson plan. Ito na yung tinatawag na assignment. Remarks. Ginagamit ng remarks ito, halimbawa kailangan mo ulitin yung, 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 yung lesson mo or nagkulang ka sa oras. And next is reflection. This part of the DLL requires teacher to reflect on and assess their effectiveness. In this part of DLL, the teacher should make notes on the number of learner who earn 80% in the evaluation, the number of learner who require additional activities for remediation, and those who continue to require remediation, the effectiveness of the remedial lesson, the teaching strategies or method that work well, and why and the difficulties teacher encounter that their principal or supervisor can help solve. And this is the example of daily lesson plan or DLP. Same part in siya or same content, but the daily lesson plan is the most detailed standard-based plan that the teacher will develop. It's outlined the purpose and activities of what, what will be done on a specific day or across several days. Ito yung ginagamit ng new heart teacher. Ang de daily lesson plan is po pang ano lang siya, pang isang araw. Kumbaga, kung Monday, Monday lang siya. Eh, yung DLP. Thank you! Hello! I am Teacher Jessa. How are you today? Okay, very good. So, after the discussion of Ma'am Judith, now, I will discuss the another type of lesson plan, which is the semi-detailed lesson plan. So before anything else, let us define what is semi-detailed lesson plan. So semi-detailed lesson plan is less intricate than the detailed lesson plan. It is having a general game plan of what you wanted to cover for that subject on for that particular day. So meaning to say semi-detailed lesson plan will give you an information about the lesson plan, but not as much as the detailed. So here are the important things to remember when we are making a semi-detailed lesson plan. So, first is we have an objectives. Second is we have a subject matter. Third is procedure. And under the procedure, we have the subcomponent, which are the routinary activity, review, motivation, lesson proper, application, and generalization. Followed by evaluation. And for the last one is assignment. So, when you heard learning objectives, what comes into your mind? So, what is the learning objectives? So, learning objectives state what these students will learn by the end of the lesson or module. It should include a measurable verb from the designated domain, which is the cognitive, affective, or psychomotor that focus on the students. So, I have an example here. So, as you can see in the examples, making objectives will serve as the basis of the teacher on what are the things that should be done at the end of the every discussion. And objectives will be divided into three domains. So, first one is we have the cognitive. So, cognitive deals with the intellect, intellectual side of learning. So, meaning to say, cognitive may answer the question, on what do we want to learn at the end of the day's activity or at the end of the meeting? And for the affective, it may answer the question, what behavior or what change may happen to them at the end of the day? And for the psychomotor, it pertains of skills of the students. So means it may answer the question, what do we want our students do after end of the day? And for the subject matter, so we have includes the specific topic and how did that relates back to the curriculum guide. So it should include the resources, sources of information or references, whether that it's a website, textbook, or some other materials. 
So, sa subject matter, kinakailangan mong ilagay yung specific topic mo, like for example, body movements, locomotor and non-locomotor, followed by references. So, kinakailangan mo din ilagay dito yung pinagkukunan mo ng sources, which is the curriculum guide. Example din dito sa example is the physical fitness and advanced gymnastic, page 47 and 48 first year college book and for the other learning resources refers to the materials just as those other teacher made like for example gumamit dito sila ng powerpoint presentation picture or other materials needed on the presentation para mas ma-visualize ng students mo kung ano yung dinidiscuss mo as a teacher so next is procedure the procedure makes up the body of the plan it an explanation of how the lesson will progress step by step for detailed lesson plan. This include the expected routines, the activities that will go on, and the question and answer. For the semi detail, this is the more about the procedure or step and the methods the teacher will use to get there. So if we have the routinary activity, so it is the activity that will serve as a guide of the teacher. So, we have opening prayer, greetings, energizer, checking of attendance. So, next is review. It is the lesson for asking the students what they have learned in the past lesson. So, for the motivation is the teacher will show two or more picture and then he or she will ask his or her students what do the picture is all about. So, in that way, the students will be motivated and the rest they have an idea what is the next topic is all about. So, for the lesson proper, it serves as the whole discussion of the lesson. And for the application, in application, teacher will provide some activities that help learners apply their learning to new situation or context beyond the lesson and connect it to their own lives. So for the generalization, so making generalization about the lesson will, will conclude the lesson by asking some question that will help them to criticize their learning. So, for evaluation is where the teacher wait up, how will children understand what they've been in that lesson? They may as example simple as some multiple choice question or a formative test. So, if you are conduct an evaluation, you can take them the form of formative test consisting of 5 to 10 items, multiple choice question after the days, so, lesson, we can determine the mastery of the learning of the students. So, for the assignment, the assignment is the component of a plan made of the question and exercises and set of practice specified by the teacher, including focused specific question. So, after all the discussion end, the teacher give another task on their students, which is an essay type example. On a one whole sheet of paper, of yellow paper, search the different types of basic body position or any task that related on the previous topic. So after all the discussion, we realized that semi-detailed is so semi-detailed lesson plan is focused on what teacher wants to cover for that subject on that day. Good day everyone, I am Mr. Reynold Torres from BPED. Three. So today, I'm going to continue the discussion of our group. And uh, for my discussion, I will discuss uh, detailed lesson plan or DLP. Detailed lesson plan is a teacher roadmap for a lesson. It contains a detailed description of the steps a teacher will take to teach a particular topic. Semi-detailed uh, plans leave out the student activity. But detailed lesson plans Focus on conversation and question and answer between students and the teacher. Here's the uh, parts of the detailed lesson plan. The objectives, subject matter, procedure, and the lesson proper. And for the objectives, uh, a detailed lesson plan must be an action-oriented 
and must focus on the most important and essential learning needs of the class. They should be uh, measurable so teachers can track students' progress and ensure that new concepts are understood before moving on and achievable considering the time available. For the subject matter, subject matter, you must consider the topic, the reference, and the materials. Ayan, subject matter in DLP being the specific knowledge to be shared uh, within the content for the students and contains a topic, reference, and materials topic for the particular lesson to be tackled. Reference which allows you to acknowledge the contribution of the other writers and researchers in your work. And lastly, the materials used in the lesson. So for the procedure, it is an adept explanation of how the lesson will progress in a classroom. The lesson procedure is essentially a step-by-step -step instruction that walk you through everything from the time students enter the classroom until the bells rings and the end of the period which makes it more detailed in a dlp procedure it includes preliminary uh, activities and review of the past the le past lesson and motivation and everything is divided into the teacher's activity and the students uh, activity under the preliminary activities these are the activities uh, done before the starting of the class. And this includes the readings, prayers, and class management, and checking up attendance. After the preliminary activities, it will follow by the review of the past lessons. The teacher can use a game or uh, any activity which can uh, relate to the past lessons for the students to participate and uh, be active too. And the last part is motivation. This part is important because it serves as an introduction or idea to the next lesson. The teacher can also use an activity again for this part to make it uh, more exciting. So for the lesson proper, this part of the lesson plan is the combination of the discussion, application, and generalization of the lesson. It, in a semi-detailed lesson plan, evaluation and assignment part is separated while in the detailed lesson plan, it is combined. That is all for my topic, detailed lesson plan. Hi everyone, I am Loy Viloya from BPED 3E. How are you today? Okay, in this time, I will discuss the lesson proper. And I hope that you are all comfortable to your seats while listening to my discussion. Lesson proper. It includes discussion of the lesson, application, and also the generalization, and which have an interaction between the teacher and the students. And by writing an objectives, it must be correctly by using the three domains of learning. The first one is the cognitive, psychomotor, and the effective. When we say cognitive, it is a purely focus on intellect of an individual, where the shipping of total personality of our students. When the cognitive it is a by answer the question, what do you want teachers or students learn at the end of the lesson? And when we say psychomotor, it is the skills. It can answer the question, what do you want our student do after the end of the lesson? And lastly, effective. It is the values. It can answer the question, what behavior or what change of behavior may happen to them at the end of the day? Do the learning goals represent a transition in achieving an overall goal for the lesson? We need to represent a transition. 
when we say transition, it is a change or a shift from one state to another. And by achieving an overall goal, for example, in lesson plan, we have greetings, followed by prayer, class management, motivation, discussion of the lesson, application, and also the generalization. And these are the example of transition. Do your lesson exercise guarantee that student accomplish their goal and your ultimate goal? Being a teacher, we need to motivate the student to take some responsibility for their own learning and to participate the discussion because we all know that participating the class discussion is very effective because we can see if the students are listening with their teacher and we can give some question regarding to the lesson that we are discussing. Is the purpose of learning measurable? Teachers can track student progress and ensure if they understand the lesson before move to another lesson because some of the students get a low and high score if they have an activity. If the student get a high score, Meaning to say, your discussion is effective to them because they understand better. And if your students get a low score, your discussion is not effective to them. And you need to improve or think what are the effective way of teaching that you need to apply. Is the learning target student-centered? An instructional approach that places focus on the students instead of the teacher. The teacher is still the classroom authority figure, but functions as more as a coach or facilitator. As students embrace a more active and collaborative role in their own learning. In that learning process, it have sharing of ideas, sharing of experiences, and also sharing of thoughts. Because students tend to be more interested in learning when they can interact with one another and participate actively in their own education. Have you used an appropriate verb for action that target the desired success level? The important thing for teacher is to use an appropriate verb for action, such as remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and the last one is creating. And they focus how they will proceed. Activities are performed one after another. At the end of the lesson, students have an activity given by their teacher. And the teachers need to evaluate what students know and what they do not know. And that's all. Thank you for listening. Keep safe, everyone.